On today's episode, we help you stop breaking off fish, we preview a new jerkbait from Berkeley, and a screaming deal on a Shimano rod and reel combo just for you guys. All that and more in this episode of Tackle Talk. Hello everybody, I'm Bill Dance, and you're listening to Tackle Talk. the Tackle Talk Podcast, brought to you by American Legacy Fishing and Outdoors, world-class fishing gear, unmatched personal service. Now, here's your host, Andrew Hayes. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Tackle Talk podcast. As always, Tackle Talk is brought to you by the kind folks over at American Legacy Fishing and Outdoors. ALF carries a massive selection of high quality fishing gear from your favorite brands. That could be G. Loomis, Shimano, Dobbins, it could be St. Croix, Daiwa, Luz, a ton more. And not only do they have an incredible selection, but their lightning fast shipping and their incredible customer service will show you why they have one of the most loyal fan bases in the country. They are a Midwestern company, Midwestern roots. They take care of their folks from start to finish. You order, you get checked in during your order, you get your shipping confirmation when it's delivered, checking in afterwards. That's what you're getting with ALF that you're not getting with other companies. If something is to happen, if your shipping goes bad, if you have a question, you need to change an order, stuff like that. That's all things that you can call ALF. You can email ALF. You can get an actual person to help you solve your problem. You're not going to some phone tree and, you know, 8 billion different automated voice message things and, you know, press 1, 2, 8, 12. You're getting real people that can help you out with your real problems. That's why I love using somebody like ALF. I have ordered from them forever. I think we talked about it way long time ago when I bought that Dial Alexa as my actual musky reel for the first time. That was one of my first experiences with ALF and ever since then I've been a loyal customer and it's cool to see a lot of you guys kind of come around to this too through our Dobbins sale through uh, probably the deal we're going to have at the end of this episode. We have a really good deal on a, a Shimano combo for you guys too just for listeners. So we'll get to that in a little bit too but go check them out www.americanlegacyfishing.com Um, Check out all the gear they have. Great folks. Again, I can't say enough about them, and they help us continue to do the show. So go support them at www.americanlegacyfishing.com. All right, we have a jam-packed show for you today. The very first thing I want to talk about is something that you may or may not have seen some whispers about on social media uh, from folks that you follow, from you know the quote-unquote influencers out there or the uh, the pros hinting at this. But Hank Cherry, who just won his second Bassmaster Classic, is coming out with a jerkbait with Berkeley, and it is called the Stunna. S-T-U-N-N-A, the Stunna Jerkbait, is going to be hitting the market soon, and you've already seen this get into people's hands to test, to kind of start to promote, and I wanted to talk about this because... If I was just a cynical person, I would immediately think that this was like the biggest cash grab in the world. Okay, Hank Cherry wins the second Bassmaster Classic. Uh, He's known for throwing a jerkbait. Let's rush a jerkbait out there and let's get people to buy this. And I want to make sure that you guys know that that's really not the case with this. Um, It's very easy to be cynical with the fishing industry and how they will just slap names on things and get them out there to try and sell. This is something that has been in the works for a long time. So we will get to the proof of that uh, in just a second. But first, I have heard from folks in the industry that when this hits the market, it's going to be priced at about $15. That's going to be regular MSRP, not to say that people can't run sales on them, but 15 bucks sounds like it's going to be basically where these jerk baits are priced. And that puts them kind of right in the middle. It doesn't put them super, super expensive. It also doesn't put them as the cheapest jerk baits out there either. This isn't a $6 Husky jerk, and it's not a $25 Megabass Vision 110 either. So it's right in the middle. The Megabass 110, the gold standard of suspension suspended jerk baits usually runs 25 26 bucks depending on where you're buying it from and again you can go to your local store you can get a husky jerk for 6 or 7 bucks you can get an x-rap for 
I don't know, probably 10 or 12 or whatever they are. So this is kind of right in the middle of those, uh, which is interesting because this has a lot of hype coming with it, obviously with Hank, you know, being the, uh, I guess, the help developing this with Berkeley, and it's been going on for a while, and he just won the second Bassmaster Classic. And you see this with classics, right? Whatever somebody wins the classic on immediately sells out or becomes worth, you know, a billion dollars. A couple years ago, it was like the the fire crawl jackhammers, right? You couldn't find them anywhere. People were selling them for... For 50 60 bucks online that's kind of the craze that comes along with the Bassmaster Classic and uh, and this jerkbait is probably going to follow suit you're going to have the two-time back-to-back winner who is going to be coming out with a signature jerkbait he's known for throwing jerkbaits um, this is just going to be a home run for Berkeley you can already see the writing on the wall this is going to sell like crazy uh, but the thing I wanted to talk about here was that again this is not just a very quick cash grab from Berkeley and i obviously have nothing to do with Berkeley. So if it was, I would have no problem saying that I think that this is just a quick cash grab and don't fall victim to it. But I know firsthand that Hank has been working on this jerkbait for a long time. And if you are a savvy listener to the show, you can pick up on it too. If you want to do some detective work, if you go back to our episode with Hank Cherry back in August uh, of last year, and at the very end of the show, we just got done talking about jerkbait fishing. And I asked him if someone was listening to this and they wanted, you know, a jerkbait to go out and buy and get started in this or kind of step up their jerkbait game, where would you send people and what jerkbaits would you be looking for? Listen to his answer. This is cut straight from our episode from August of last year. If someone's listening to this and they're, you know, just getting into, you know, fishing more heavily and they want to step up their jerkbait game, what direction would you point them in if they want to get a couple for their box? Um, well, I can't talk about one yet, but it's coming very soon. Um, that would definitely be one. It's been a lot of time spent on it. I think it's going to be a very good product. Right there. You can hear it straight from his mouth. They have been working, if you want to do the timeline on this, at least nine or ten months. So well before Hank wins that second Bassmaster Classic, he is working with this with Berkeley to develop a jerkbait. You can hear him hint at it right there. This was way before he could talk about it before you know he could spill any beans or anything on it. But he did kind of let it slip that, hey, I'm working with Berkeley on some sort of jerkbait and look out for that in the future. The Stunna, that's what he was talking about. That's what he was working on. And the timing just lines up perfectly. Lightning strikes in a bottle twice. He wins a second Bassmaster Classic. And now the Stunna is just going to be absolutely skyrocketed. Good luck finding these probably when they hit shelves unless they just stock the ever-living crap out of everything, and I still bet that these fly off the shelves. So the Berkeley Stunna Jerkbait, keep an eye out. That should be coming in the next few months. I would say, uh, I don't think I've seen an actual date, but I would guess maybe late summer, just in time for fall and winter jerkbait fishing. All right, the main reason that we are having today's episode, we are going to get into tips to help you stop breaking off your fishing line. Stop breaking off fish, stop breaking off on hook sets, stop just the frustration of you go to either lift up, you go to set the hook, you go to cast and your lure goes flying right. When your line breaks, it's the worst feeling in the world and you sit there and you think, what should I have done differently to make sure that that didn't happen? So we will get to that in just a second. First, a very quick message from the boys over at Dark Horse Tackle. You know that Dark Horse Tackle is an awesome company that's doing some really cool stuff with subscription boxes. A lot of you guys, a lot of you listeners have subscribed and you've got your first couple Dark Horse Tackle boxes. The pictures are awesome to get. You guys have been super pumped with what you're getting and that makes me really happy because I love recommending companies that I think you guys will enjoy that aren't just the normal companies you hear on every other show, you hear you know, on every YouTube channel. There's some really cool stuff out there that does not get the publicity that it needs to get. Dark Horse Tackle is one of those companies. It is a subscription box that instead of sending you cheap Chinese knockoff baits or overstock baits or baits that are in the clearance bin, um, you know, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, but I don't want an Arashi square bill for the hundredth time in these boxes, right? That's what you get with other box companies. You're not getting that with Dark Horse Tackle. With Dark Horse Tackle, you get high quality, small batch, custom lures delivered right to your doorstep each and every month. These are companies that you may or may not have heard of, probably have not have heard of because I haven't heard of most of these, but they're cool folks that are making stuff right here in the United States. They're making them in garages, making them in workshops, uh, just bootstrapped good all-American companies that are making good fishing tackle that they're going to deliver right to your door. And who knows, a lot of these companies you could fall in love with. These could be some of your favorite companies and you're throwing the stuff that your friends aren't. Your friends are looking at your stuff and saying, what is that? Be like, well, let me tell you. All right. Turn some folks on to some really cool companies, turn them on to cool gear, gear that's made right, 
great paint, great hooks, great components that you don't really get with a lot of those mass-produced baits. So go check them out, www.darkhorsetackle.com. Click subscribe. You'll see the different options there. They have a, a, a starter pack that's like seven bucks a month or something um, where you get a couple baits to try it out. Really cool opportunity. Or you can do the full package. I think it's like 25 um, But right now, if you use code tackle talk 30 Tackle Talk 30 at checkout. You will save 30% off your first month's box just for listening to Tackle Talk, just for being a listener of the show. We'll pass the savings along to you. 30% off that first box, www.darkhorsetackle.com. Use code Tackle Talk 30. All right, let's get into some tips on how to stop breaking off either on hook sets or casting your lure or whatever, right? The, just the break off in general, very annoying. It happens to all of us, and we all go through this kind of uh, rigmarole in your head of as soon as that snaps of why did that snap, and there's a billion different reasons that it could snap, a billion different places that it could happen, where that failure happens, but the bottom line is your line failed, and it failed for a reason, so you need to get to the bottom of why did that line fail, and was it preventable? And sometimes there are fluke accents where it's not preventable. But like 90% of the time, if you go through this checklist we're about to do and we're going to talk about all of these, some of this could have been prevented, if not most of this, could have been prevented just with maintenance, with kind of keeping your radar up and keeping your eyes peeled for stuff that you should be checking for. Um, Make sure you're checking your gear all the time and just using the right line in the right way. So let's get into this. First off, when your line breaks, the first question that you should think is where did that happen? Look at the end of your line. It's really easy to tell, right? Don't uh, reel in, or I guess if you do have to reel in, you know what happened way out there. But, you know, just pull that line up and take a look. Did that line break at your lure? Did it break at your lead or not? Or did it break somewhere on your main line? And that question itself is going to help you determine where did we go wrong, where did that failure happen, and how to prevent it in the future. So if it broke at the lure, 99% of the time, it was a bad knot. Nobody likes to hear that. Everybody's too proud to admit they tied a bad knot. I tie bad knots. The pros tie bad knots. Everybody ties bad knots. A lot of times you tie a bad knot without knowing you tied a bad knot. But there are certain things you need to do every single time to make sure that that knot is as good as it's able to be and able to be tied. Very first thing, obviously, if you're using fluorocarbon or even braid, I like to wet braid too. But if you're using fluorocarbon, you really need to wet your knot before you are cinching that down. If you are just cinching that dry, you are burning that fluorocarbon, and that fluorocarbon is going to fail right there at the knot before it's going to fail anywhere else. Fluorocarbon is a very, very easy line to burn and to weaken with friction. So when you're tying down that knot, dip it in the water, spit on it, do whatever you need to do to kind of lubricate that knot before you cinch it all the way down. And you should pretty much do that before you start tightening it all. Don't tighten it like 90% and then get it wet and finish it off. Get it wet before you start the tightening process on that knot, especially polymer knots, but any knot that you're using should probably be lubricated while you're tightening it down. So make sure you're doing that. But the easy solution on here, tie a better knot. If you are lubricating that knot and you are still having knots fail, you could be, I guess, probably trimming the tag in too close. Uh, Who was, I think it was Gerald Swindle that had a funny bit on this where he's like, I don't feel the need to trim my tag end, you know, the end that you're going to cut off to trim that excess line. I don't feel the need to trim that right at the knot because, you know, what, you think it looks weird or you think fish are going to see it or whatever. They're not worried about the giant main line that's coming off that lure. They're not worried about the tag end. Most people's, I guess, probably... Uh, rebuttal to that is why I want that tag end down as close as I can because it can pick up weeds especially if you're using you know thick line it sticks out a little bit it can change the motion of your lure or whatever bottom line is just don't cut it right at the knot leave a tiny bit out there just to give yourself some play so if that knot does move on that first hook set or the first time you snag something um, or you know or you hook a fish it's got a little bit of room to tighten a little bit more without that tag end just going right through the knot and then your knot fails so don't clip that super super close to the line uh, and you'll help a little bit there but also make sure you're checking for abrasion and abrasion from the knot itself is probably not coming from timber or rocks or anything like that the two things I can think of that would lead to abrasion on your knot first and foremost 
reeling that lure all the way up to your guide. When you reel that lure all the way up to your guide, what stops the lure from going in? It's either the lure itself or it's your knot. Your knot is going to hit the edge of that guide before your lure comes up and hits the guide and stops, you know, the tip on your rod right there. So don't reel your lure all the way up. All you're asking for is that kind of, you know, uh, insert up there to start rubbing on that knot. And the knot is not meant to be rubbed on by those. Line, yes, line goes in and out of your eyelets all the time. Knot don't really do so well when they're met with something that can stop them or something that can catch them that just gives you a chance to weaken your knot. So don't reel it all the way up to the tip of your eyelet when you're, you know, done fishing or whatever. Just hook it to one of the other eyelets, hook it to the keeper near your reel or whatever rod you're using, you know, find a way to hook that somewhere else. Uh, And then the very last thing is it could be abrasion from the weight that you're using, especially if you're using a Texas rig or some sort of free moving weight up there. What's that weight doing all the time? That weight is coming down and kind of smashing your uh, your knot right there, right? It's going up and down. A lot of times people will peg their weight. I peg my weight all the time too. So it'll kind of go up to the peg. And then when it comes back down to, you know, gravity takes it right back down to your hook. It's usually not really hitting your hook. It's hitting your knot. So that's another thing that could be if you have sharp spots on the bottom of your bullet weight or on the bottom of your worm weight or whatever, that can kind of weaken your knot a little bit too. Easy solution on that, put a peg between your weight and the knot. It's not going to really hurt anything at all. Just put a bobber stop or a peg between your weight and your knot, not just above your weight to keep it from going up your line. So when you're rigging this up, bobber stop goes on your line, weight goes on your line, another bobber stop goes on your line, and then tie your knot. So easy ways to kind of protect your knot a little bit. That's kind of the name of the game there is protecting your knot after you've tied a good knot. But if you're breaking off at your lure or at your hook, 99% of the time, it is going to be because you tied a bad knot. Nobody wants to hear that. That is just the cold, hard truth. So now what happens if it's breaking off at your leader? Same thing, right? A lot. I I have this happen a lot of times. And it's not necessarily, you know, an end all be all kind of thing. But a lot of times if I set the hook really hard, if I, you know, get snagged and I'm trying to, you know, whip that off or something, my line will break at my leader knot. And that's just because at some point, something is going to give, and that's kind of an overarching theme of this conversation. At some point, and a lot of times when there's a lot of stress on your line, something's got to give. It's usually not going to be your hooks on your lure that are going to give. Sometimes they will, uh, and those will bend out and you'll get your lure back. But some, And it's usually not going to be your rod or your reel that fails. The, I guess, kind of uh, least strong thing, the weakest thing in this whole equation is usually your fishing line. So it has to break somewhere if you're putting too much stress on this whole, I guess, from start to finish from lure to line to rod and reel something has to give a lot of times it's your line and a lot of times in that line the weakest spot it's going to be your leader knot and again it can come back to you didn't tie a great leader knot Um, not every leader knot that I tie is fantastic either they get the job done just do a double uni knot but I'm sure I make mistakes in my knot tying process that lead to that being the weakest part in my whole line and it kind of makes sense so if that's the case just do your best. Tie those double uni knots. Tie whatever knot you're using to attach like your braid or your fluorocarbon together uh, or your braid to mono together, whatever you're doing. Just try your best right there. But just know that if your line is breaking at the leader knot itself, and you can find that by reeling it in, and you'll look and a lot of times you'll have a little bit of that, uh, you know, the leader still on there or the end will be really curly or whatever because that's where your knot was. Really easy solution there is just get better at tying your leader knots or don't stress out your line enough where something has to break and it ends up being your leader knot. That's, you know, a lot of times the case too. And that's kind of the, one of the opposite sides of this conversation is that's why a lot of people use leaders because when they get snagged and they need to break off their line, they don't have to cut their line right at the, you know, the the tip of the rod. And then you have 50 foot of line out there that not only did you waste and did you lose, but is now out there in the water that someone else could get snagged on that, you know, wildlife could get hurt on, whatever. A lot of people will use leaders. So when they need to break off, the first thing that breaks is that leader knot. So yes, you lose your lure. Yes, you use a little bit of line, but you don't lose a ton of line like you would if you were just using a main line. So it's kind of one of the necessary evils of using a leader. That's going to be a lot of times where you break off, whether it's on purpose or whether it's not. Just, you know, try and tie the best knot you can, use the appropriate knot for what lines you're using, and go from there. But most of the time, if if that's your issue, 
and it's not from you trying to overdo your line, then the only other thing I can really think of there is, again, you're not is getting abrasion on it, and that could be from running it over things that you shouldn't be running it over, right? If you cast over a log, and then you keep it real taut, and you run that line over the log, not only are you, you know, causing abrasion to your line, you're causing abrasion to your knot, too. Whenever that goes over, that can weaken the knot. Um, if you're casting and that knot is right in your eyelet when you're casting, or if you tied too big of a knot, right, and you're using micro guides or something, when it goes through the the ceramic inserts there, you'll feel it kind of clunky as it goes through. That can weaken your knot. So just be really careful with your leader knot. A couple solutions there. You can always tie a smaller leader so that that leader knot is not going through your eyelets. That's always an option. Um, you don't have to have a six-foot leader all the time. You know, it can be a foot, two foot, as long as it's off of your lure if you're really worried about line shy, stuff like that. And, you know, tie a smaller leader, and it won't have to go through your eyes as much. But you can tie a shorter leader, take care of your leader knot, tie a better leader knot. It's really all you can do at that point. Now, if your line is breaking at some random spot on your line, that's where we need to have a conversation about, you know, the line that you're choosing, about your gear, all that kind of stuff. So if you're just breaking off at a random point on your main line, um, you know, if you cast out and you're using just one line, right, you don't have a leader on, you're just using one line and you break off maybe two or three foot above your uh, lure or as you cast, you know, that lure just goes flying one direction with, you know, two or three foot of line on it and you're left over here. What happens? So you need to check a couple different things here. If you are breaking off and it's just at a random spot in your line, always could be bad line. I guess you can chalk it up to that if you want. Um, it could be a bad spool. It could be an old spool, especially if it's old line. Maybe it wasn't stored properly. Maybe you got just kind of a lemon spool of line there. I don't know. That's always an option. Usually not the case though. Um, it's just an easy thing to blame if you don't uh, find the <laughs> the real reason. So you, you can always chalk it up to bad line. But if you're buying multiple spools and this is still happening, it's not the line's fault. It's something that you're doing or something that with your gear, you're having an issue we're gonna get to in a second that might be the cause of this and it's not the line's fault. So yes, theoretically, it could be bad line. Usually not the case though. So then what could it be? It could be a bad eyelet. Probably... 80% of the time when I'm breaking off and I'm having issues and I'm getting frustrated with this, it's something on my rod, it's something uh, maybe on my reel that we'll get to in a second that's causing the nicks in that line. So the first thing could be an eyelet. You have, what, I don't know, 8, 10, 11, 12 eyelets on your rod. All of those eyelets are making contact with your line, and those are all places where if there's a nick or a scratch or something in that kind of ceramic insert or that ceramic insert falls out completely, those are places where you can rub that line, where you can nick that line, where you can cause kind of places in that line, again, where if something is going to fail, it's going to be right there as opposed to where the rest of the line is fine. You need to find those spots. How do you find the bad spots on your eyelet? Easy way to do it. Obviously, just very, very closely inspect every single one of the eyelets on the rod that you're having a problem with. These nicks can be so small. They can be so hard to find. Yeah, there can be a giant crack. That's easy. But sometimes it's a really, really small kind of imperfection on your uh, on your insert there that's causing the issue. So one thing that I'll do, I'll take a Q-tip and I'll use that Q-tip and I'll kind of rub it around the inside of my eyelets and I'll go around a couple times and usually if there's a nick or a cut or a crack or something like that, some of that fuzz, that white fuzz from the Q-tip will get stuck right there and you'll be able to see clear as day where that issue is. So try that just with a regular you know dry Q-tip. Start going around your eyelets and seeing if any fuzz is coming off and catching in a certain spot that's a spot that you need to take a look at and either need to get that eyelet replaced or repaired, something like that, so you quit breaking off your line. The other thing that it could be, it could be your reel, especially a spinning reel. It could be that roller on your reel. So if you look at your spinning reel, that spot that's on the bail where that line goes under and it makes contact with the reel, um, it's got kind of like a, a circle, cylindrical little part right there, the roller, that could be an issue too. If you have a spot on your roller where there's a nick or a crack or a scratch or something like that, that can also affect affect your line. So if you're seeing line just all over your line that's that's got issues with it too all the way down to your reel, that could be an option. Take a look at that. I've had that happen before with some reels, especially with braid. It's very easy to tell with braid when things start fraying. When that braid is dry and you're taking a look at it and it's got little fuzzies all over it, you know that something's wrong and you need to fix it. 
Uh, and that's how I've found the issues on either my rod or my reel is looking at especially light braid. You can see really quickly where you're having issues. So check your reel. If it's a casting reel, it can still happen too. Usually it's going to be at that line feeder, that little thing that's on the worm shaft that goes back and forth and back and forth as you're reeling in. The only spot really that has contact with your line, check there too. If there's a scratch, especially at the bottom of it, you can nick your line there too. If it just feels sharp, you might have to file that down a little bit or sand that down. That could always be an option too. So check your reel check your rod check places where there's contact with your line and if there's any nicks or scratches or anything like that you need to fix that because otherwise for the rest of time if you're using that rod reel you're going to have these issues nothing's going to be fixed you're going to lose fish you're going to lose lures you're going to have a really bad time so fix your issues there with your gear okay so then what if it's not any of those what if it's not that you know maybe you tied a good knot maybe the there's no spots on your gear where there could be abrasion coming from your eyelets from your uh, rod, your reel, anything like that. The next thing you need to check, make sure you get in the habit of frequently checking your line after you catch a fish, after you break off, after you go in a tree, anything like that. Make sure you take your fingers and just run your fingers down your line, especially the first like four or five feet of your line from your lure up. Just run your fingers down your line. You should be able to feel really quickly if there's any nicks, any imperfections in that line. And if there is, retie your line. And I used to be that guy. I know. I used to be the guy that would get hung up in a tree. I'd get my lure back and I'd send it. I would catch, you know, three or four fish. I wouldn't check my line. I'd send it. I would feel nicks in my line after I got hung up. I'd be like, ah, it'll be all right. And I'll still start casting. And then I would be the same guy that would be really upset the next time I lost a big fish, the next time I lost a lure, things like that. Don't be that guy. Check your line frequently. If you feel a nick, retie no matter how little no matter how minuscule retie end of discussion if you are not retying after you're feeling nicks in your line and you're still kind of ignoring them and fishing this whole conversation is pointless that's where your line is going to fail so after that the next question could be upping your line choice if you're doing everything right and it's just not working out and you're still breaking off try upping your pound test if you're on a spinning reel you know and you're throwing 10 pound and it's just for some reason not working go up to 15 give it a try especially like me i like on spinning reels to throw you know like 8 10 you know maybe 12 pound line um you know, if, if that's not working for you, there's always the option of going up a couple pound test and that should help the problem too. As long as again, it's not any of the problems we already talked about. As long as you don't have a nick in your, uh, eyelets, you don't have a nick on your rod or your reel. Um, if you do, you can up your pound test all day long, but you haven't fixed the issue, which was you have a piece of gear that is malfunctioning. You need to fix that. So heavier line doesn't always work. You might be able to go up, you know, heavier line and get, you know, 30 more casts out of it with that nick in your eyelet, but eventually it is still going to fail you. So other thing you probably need to think about too is setting your drag right. If your drag is locked down, like I had this happen the other day and it was a mistake and it was my fault and there's nothing that the rod, the reel, the line, the fish, anything could have done about it. I got snagged. I tightened my drag all the way down on my spinning reel to try and break my line. I broke my line. I retied, and then I, f I threw out for another cast. I hooked a giant smallmouth, and it broke me off. And you know why it broke me off? Because I still had my drag locked down from when I was trying to unsnag myself. Idiot move, stupid move, user error was not the line's fault, nobody's fault but my own. If I would have loosened that drag even just a little bit to give that fish a little bit of play, because again, I was using 10-pound braid, that is not meant to have giant hook sets with the drag locked down. It is meant to have, you know, medium hook sets with the drag, you know, adjusted appropriately. I would have landed that fish, but I didn't because it was a stupid mistake and I forgot to untighten my drag, loosen my drag from when I was snagged. So make sure your drag is set up appropriately. That's obviously a whole different conversation on whether you're using single hooks, you're using treble hooks, you're using different kinds of line, what rod you're using, all that kind of stuff. That's a whole different episode that we would probably have to do. But set your drag appropriately for the line that you're using, for the lure that you're using, so that, again, you don't get into the situation where if you are putting too much effort and too much force on this line something has to give somewhere uh, don't get in that situation do everything appropriately and that line should not have uh, a reason to break especially again if your gear is good if you're doing all the steps that we're talking about today um, last but not least there's always the option of trying a different brand. If you have tried everything on this list, your knot's good, no abrasion, nothing wrong with your rod or your reel, you're using the appropriate pound test, your drag is set right, and you're still having a bad time, try a different brand of line. I mean, seriously, there are certain lines that I just will not use. Like, I would almost rather stay home than go fishing with certain brands of line. One of those I'll say right now, Seaguar Red Label, 
trash. I would rather, <laughs> I would, I'd rather sit at home and watch videos about fishing than go out and fish with Seaguar Red Label. I have broken off more fish probably with Seaguar Red Label than I have with probably all the other lines out there combined. But then there's other Seaguar lines that I really like, you know, Invisex, Abrazex, all of those are really good. Red Label though, trash. So if that's your issue, you know, I could have sat there till I was blue in the face and tried all of this stuff, but if I was still fishing bad line, I'm probably still gonna have these issues at some point or another. So finally there, try a different brand of line. I've used Sunline uh, now for a lot of those things that I was using Red Label for back in the past, and I've never had an issue with it. I, I almost have the point where it's hard to break because, you know, when I get snagged and try to break off my line, I feel like I'm going to explode my reel before the line's going to break. And it's just the difference in different brands. It can be the exact same pound test. Both are fluorocarbon. One of them's going to break way before the other. And price, a lot of times, will reflect that. If you look at the price of Sunline Sniper and the price of Red Label, obviously there's a difference there. There's also a difference in the line. So there's some quick tips on how to not break off as frequently or to break off less on fish in the future. Tie good knots. Don't burn that line. Be aware of abrasion, check your line often, uh, check your guides on your rod, check your reel, set your drag appropriately, use the right pound test for your application, and try different brands. That will kind of solve, I would say, probably 90 to 95% of the problems that you could have with breaking your line with those simple steps. So hope that helps you, save you some you know, frustration and some headaches down the road. Do everything right, stop breaking off fish, and land more of them. All right, and finally, to end the day today, we have a deal and a half for you guys, courtesy of American Legacy Fishing, just for Tackle Talk listeners, nobody else. You guys stuck around to the end of the show, and now you get rewarded. So today, we have a $250 combo from Shimano, yes, rod and reel, that we are taking from $250 down to $169.99. That is $80 off a Shimano combo, and that combo is the Shimano SLX MGL70 combo. So for one week only, you guys can use code TACKLETALKSLX, all one word, all caps, TACKLETALKSLX at checkout, and you can take the price of this combo from $250 down to $169.99 at AmericanLegacyFishing.com. So first, the reel. The reel itself is the SLX MGL. It's the newest addition to the SLX line. You first had kind of the regular SLX come out a few years ago, the blue reels. Uh, they're kind of right below a step on the Corrado. Everybody loved them. The price point's great. They sold really well. It quickly became one of Shimano's best sellers. Um, and again, then after that, they built on that line, and they did the SLX DC for those that like digital reels. Again, a home run, great seller for Shimano, and now they have the SLX MGL. So first, the reel itself is a 70 size, which means it's compact, it's easy to palm, easy to work with, ergonomic, it feels great in your hand, especially, you know, I don't have giant hands, so a lot of these kind of smaller reels feel great to me when I'm trying to palm them, when I'm, you know, twitching something, like a jerk bait, um, when I'm flipping and pitching a little bit, um, a lot of that kind of stuff just feels better to me with a smaller reel in my hand, this is a reel that feels great in the hand, it's great for light line techniques, like, you know, kind of finesse stuff, like, I don't know, maybe you would throw in, like, the Midwest, maybe, where many of us are, um, it's a great reel for that, so so anything that you guys need, it's a very kind of versatile reel too. Cherry on top is it has the MGL spool, which has some, you know, Isaac Newton stuff with inertia and stuff that I probably should know if I paid attention in physics class. But straight from Shimano, it says the new lightweight Magnum Light, which is what MGL stands for, Magnum Light spool design significantly reduces the moment of inertia, allowing anglers to experience greater casting distance and accuracy with a wider variety of lures. So right there, straight from Shimano, simple, easy. It's meant to cast farther. It's meant to have more accuracy. I'm in. Uh, the best part of this deal, you get to build the combo. That's the cool part about this. They're not just giving you one or two preset combos. You can make the combo whatever you want. So if you go to AmericanLegacyFishing.com, you search that SLX MGL combo. There are three different gear ratio reels to choose from. You can go six to one, seven to one, eight to one. You can go right or left-handed. Um, and then you can choose from one of 13 different rods. So you can build your combo for whatever you're looking for. If you're looking for a Texas rig or a jig setup, boom, do the eight to one uh, gear ratio reel with the 7.2 medium heavy rod. 
If you're looking for a square bill setup, they have a six to one reel. You can put that on the seven foot medium glass rod and you've got a great little square bill setup. If you're looking for a frog rod, polar opposite side of the spectrum here, eight to one gear ratio reel with the seven two heavy rod. So there's all kinds of stuff that you could do there to build combos for whatever's missing in your arsenal. There are so many different combos you can make for $169. It's a steal, $80 off the original price. Just make sure to use the code and it's good for the combo only, not just the rod or reel. You have to do the combo. So you get both the rod and reel go to www.americanlegacyfishing.com search slx mgl select the combo that you want you know so select your rod select your reel it's usually priced at 250 dollars but after you make that combo and put it in your cart use code tackle talk slx and for the next week you will save 80 bucks off that combo and take it down to 169.99 All right, that is today's episode. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Break off a little less fish. Save a ton of money on a Shimano combo if you need it. Thank you, as always, to our sponsors, American Legacy Fishing Outdoors. Thanks, Dark Horse Tackle. Everybody that listens, you guys are awesome. Thanks for making this possible. Go shoot me a message. you have any other questions, at Hayes Fishing, H-A-Z-E Fishing, on Instagram or Facebook, at Tackle Talk Podcast. Go check out www.tackletalkpodcast.com. We just added another page up there that's called Resources. And on that page, actually, there is a brand new like 45 minute video of my seminar from the Columbus Fishing Expo this year where I talk about the five essential bass fishing combos, Um, some Q&A stuff at the end too, pretty good. Um, So go check out that video if you're interested. Uh, Go check us out. We do have merch coming soon. We've got hats, shirts on the way. We're finalizing everything there and you guys will be able to order those. So keep an eye out here in the near future. We do have some really cool episodes coming. Stay tuned. Leave us a review if you can on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, wherever you listen and we will see you next tuesday for another brand new episode of tackle talk thank you for listening to the tackle talk podcast tackle talk is produced by andrew hayes copyright 2021 please subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts 